Good morning, folks. We've got a number of topics to hit today, including something bolstering those two special videos we got in the evenings this week. Let's begin at spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on our star, very quiet, but with the southern aspect of the coronal hole turning into center longitudes. The previous opening hit us with solar wind two days ago, and you can see the entirety of the stream impact here as it wanes back away, and it was minor to modest at most, leaving geomagnetic conditions returning to quiet quickly. Quick peek in on Europe next, where that storm system is underway and is pounding the southern regions of the continent. Remember, it is going to continue all day today, and then tomorrow it slides out of Italy and moves over the water to Greece. Eyes open there. Let's go to Australia, where the Wolf Creek Crater is getting a time dimension makeover. Once believed to be 300,000 years old or more, it has now been taken down to as little as 120,000 years ago. Now this dating fiasco isn't quite as bad as earlier this year when they took the Nepalese ice caps from half a million years old to potentially 12,000 years old, but it's still a major slice. The ESA's asteroid impactor mission is being updated. If you recall, the smaller of a binary asteroid system will take the DART impactor, and Hera here is how they'll gather the data to study the process. NASA is sending up sounding rockets to the polar cusps. While the magnetic field is largely Earth's protector, there are gateways for the plasma near the north and south poles, allowing that plasma to gain access to the atmosphere. This is one of the key ways that particle energy gets into the Earth system for things like cloud modulation or pressure cell modification through the global electric circuit. Together with relativistic electrons and cosmic rays, these polar plasma intrusions are key mechanisms to produce the discovered correlations between solar forcing and the terrestrial atmosphere. Going to mergers in deep space up next, a brilliantly bright galaxy 300 million light years away was analyzed and found to have three cores, three active galactic nuclei. They say this is the prototype for galactic formation, where clumps collide and form greater structures. Quick note, good article in Nature on how 5G will be messing with weather forecasts. It's not so great for those with compromised cell integrity either, poor diet, or if you get scared of it and placebo yourself into having negative effects. For me, the weather is already worsening and we can't afford this lapse in science. We're going back out to space here as the galactic wind of a system was tracked by Muse. Here the most interesting bit is the large-scale structure of that galactic wind and the magnetic field of the system. What we're looking at specifically here is top left, where those two conical forms meet in the center at a flatter plane. This is precisely what we have at stars, and if Earth's equatorial ion wind was a little stronger, it's what our planetary electric and magnetic fields would resemble. What's critical here is the scalability of that north and south magnetic helix meeting centrally at the galactic current sheet, or solar wind sheet if we're talking about a star. The point is that this sheet is going to do to our star what the sun's sheet does to us, ion and electron density surge and a large-scale magnetic reversal to impart plasma instabilities and the dust and gases to pollute the corona, our double whammy nova trigger there. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. If you missed our special video yesterday, it detailed the cover-up of the catastrophe by the OSS and CIA. It is highly recommended watching if you don't know the story. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.